Are you ready for your next comedian? He's from Syria. His name is Elian. Please welcome Elian. What's up, guys? Having fun? Yeah! Woo! We have some fans there. Yeah! Great. My name is Lian Abra. I came from Syria. And my friends and family like to call me Abra Kadabra. <laughs> because I have a lot of magic tricks. <laughs> One of the best magic tricks I have done in my life is that I came here to Luxembourg. Guess how? By airplane! <laughs> Even though I'm a very good swimmer. <laughs> guys, from Middle Eastern coming to Luxembourg, you know, from Syria specifically, five years of war, I left my country for the third time to come directly to Luxembourg, it's quite, it's quite stressful, you know, especially in the airport. I didn't know how to come with my passport and, you know, pass by the security check without being killed. Even if you're a normal person, you might feel a bit anxious, it's a bit nerve-wracking in the airport. You might feel like, oh my god. Do I have cocaine on me? <laughs> I don't even know how cocaine looks like, but I might have some, but packed some by mistake. <laughs> so for me, I was, I didn't know what face I have to do when I passed by the custom holding my passport like this. I said to myself, okay, it's not a joke, Leanne. You don't need to be, you need to be serious. Something like this, okay? Make this, make this face, or a bit angry. But then I said, no, no, it's not a good idea. They might think you are angry and you will kill them in the name of Allah. So, no. <laughs> so I said, all people like to be friendly, you know, and like to laugh. So maybe a funny face, something like this. <laughs> oh no, they might think I'm very crazy like the Joker and you want to kill them all. No, it's not a good idea. So at the end, I decided to do a poker face. No gestures, okay? Passing by like this. Perfect. I'm in Europe. It's a miracle. Great. Yeah. I was fucking happy. I'm in Europe. Yeah. But suddenly, I felt very uncomfortable. Because, come on, guys. How would you trust a country that do not distinguish a Middle Eastern and kill him in the airport right away? You don't feel secure anymore. Anybody can get into this country. But I love Luxembourg, I really love it. Especially the way this, the country is dealing with the COVID situation. They're one of the only countries opening the terraces now, as Solomon say, from six to six, where nobody would be able to go there. But <laughs> me and my wife, who just watching me here for the 100 times, no, I'm just kidding. She's here, yeah, and we were like, we wanted to go to Eras, even though the weather was fucking cold, it was snowing the first day they opened the terrace. We, went, we put our wardrobe on us, and we went to have a lunch. <laughs> Yeah, and we were very happy, we enjoyed our meal. And then when we came back, we got two gifts. The first gift was a flu for two weeks. <laughs> and the second, we learned a new technique, how you cut your frozen cordon bleu with only one hand. Because the other hand is either in your coat pocket or holding the umbrella. <laughs> I work here, guys, in cybersecurity in Luxembourg. It's quite a specific domain. And you told me that you are a mechanical engineer. I tell you, yeah, this is quite also an interesting job. I'll tell you why. For me, my friends always ask me, ah, oh, you work in cybersecurity, you're a hacker. <laughs> yeah, can you try to hack my girlfriend's Facebook profile? I'm afraid she's cheating on me. <laughs> what do you think I told him? Of course, no, because first of all, I'm not a hacker. Second, I don't want him to know that I'm fucking his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't understand these men, the anti-feminist men that are afraid of the women stealing their jobs. It's crazy, because I would advise them to come and work with me in my domain. It's a desert, pure desert. It stinks, there's no woman working there in cybersecurity. You are very pampered, I would say, no? Your, your team is full of men except you? Yes. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I was struggling of this. I wanted to recruit a woman in my team to work at least with one woman 
over my career and even in my studies, I never worked with a woman except the woman that was with me in the university. But to be honest with you guys, she looked exactly the same like me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was fucking happy when I learned that a woman called Dominique joined our team. But I couldn't see her because we had the COVID, so we were doing homeworking. But I was very happy. We were chatting a lot, you know, and she was sending me these like hearts and emojis and this gypsy woman dancing. So I felt in love with her. I felt in love with Dominique. And I was even hiding from my wife in the bathroom for hours to chat with her. But one day I went to the office for a, for a crisis situation and suddenly a big man, fat man came. Oh, bonjour, je suis Dominique, votre nouvelle collègue. <laughs> Fuck, Dominique is a woman. <laughs> He's a man, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined the job, yeah. <laughs> the thing is that I, I really struggled from this even when I was a teenager. When I was a student at school, if anyone just looked at me briefly and asked me for a pen or a pencil, I used to come in my pants. <laughs> so no woman wanted to talk to me and to look at me in my face. But now, they do all look at me in my face all day because I've had their cameras at home. <laughs> I told you I'm not a hacker. For every rule, there is an exception, you know. <laughs> but I like technology. I like it so much, especially the GPS services guy. It's really facilitated our lives, especially in this country, because we can avoid road work and traffic jam. Maybe not really. One day, I had to go to a very important appointment, and I wanted to arrive on time. So I tried to configure Google Maps to avoid traffic works, sorry, traffic jam and road works. And when I click OK, Luxembourg map disappeared. <laughs> yeah, true, true. It's a narrow city. This is serious. This, this country is very narrow. Everything is narrow. The roads are narrow. The tram that we are proud of is narrow. People's minds are narrow. And the parking spaces. What's wrong with the parking spaces? I don't understand this country. It's one of the smallest countries in the world, but has the biggest cars in the world. And the parking spaces, wow, they are vast, to be honest. Especially Knudla, the one of parking Guillaume. When I first started working here, I had to go to the city center to work, so I had to park there. To be honest with you, I had to lose nine kilos to be able to go outside my car. <laughs> if you had a scratch when you parked there, it's me who made this scratch. <laughs> and even after losing nine kilos, I couldn't go out because of my big nose. <laughs> Don't look at it like this. This is after three surgeries. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm very ugly. This is the truth. Truth, yeah. I know, I, I'm very ugly. And nobody told me I'm beautiful all over my life except three people. This is a true story. Three people told me I'm beautiful. My mom, my father, not my wife. James Blunt. <laughs> You're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you to make sure to go outside tonight before 11 because we have the curfew. Maybe you hate the curfew because you want to be out even for more time, you know. But for me, I'm quite happy with the curfew at 11 because I can finally go jogging naked. <laughs> Ah, nobody is there, so I go naked. But suddenly my wife discovered that. She saw me going out naked. Are you going to be jogging like this naked? I said, of course. There's nobody in the street. But she asked me, why are you wearing a tie? You know, what if I see my manager doing jogging also? <laughs> Thank you guys, that was my time. I appreciate it.